Have you ever run into the situation where you just want your year to move with the years and your month to be on the current month when you open the report so that you don't have any maintenance on your report? That's difficult, but in this video, I will show you how you can do it. Stay tuned. Hey friends. So it's a very common requirement that people just want their reports to be dynamic. And that, for example, if your period is in the current month, which could be, for example, May 2021, that once it leaps over to the next month, the report also goes to the next month. And some kind of logic is sometimes wished there. So sometimes it's about the current month and sometimes people want to see it for the previous month. Because, for example, in finance and accounting, Often what happens is that people want their financial periods to be closed. All those kind of tricks, let's see how we can do that. So in the data set right here, I'm showing the months on the, on the columns. And there are some sales here for people with different degrees. And right now, we're not having any period in the filters at all. So if I go to my filter pane, nothing is affecting it. So I could imagine if this is a report that you want to show on a, on a weekly basis, that what could be interesting for you is to get a slicer with at least a year number, because the ones you can see. So you could go ahead at a year, and that year number is just a very easy slice here with 2020 and 21. So let's select 2021 here, because that's the year that I'm recording this in. So this looks all great. We have uh, 2021 January until September. This is fake data because we're not in September yet, but you get the idea. So we're looking at this and if the year goes over to the next one, what can we do? Well, some of the things that are in uh, by default in Power BI is that if you, for example, have your date and you get it to your filters, then if you go to that filter part and click on relative date, then something that you could do is click is in the last, is in this, is in the next. So this is not very convenient because this is always assuming that you want to have something in the, in the next or in the current or the previous month based on today. Now, perhaps there is some other logic that you want to implement. Let's, for example, say that you want to let's start out by saying that our our filters always have to be on the current day so what you can do then to get the current year in here is well we're not going to refresh we can go to transform your data and we're going to we're going to first try this out with some adjustments in power query for the calendar so out here i have a regular calendar and you can see that the year column is right here and it's only showing 2020 and 21. And the trick I'm going to show you is going to involve changing some values in the year. Please make sure that you create a separate column for this because the original year column, you might need it for your calculation in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a custom column. And there is a function to look for the date of today. And it's called date time local now. Well, let's get the first part out because it's twice here now. And what we're going to see and evaluate is if the current year of the date of today is the same as the year we're looking at. So I could say date.year. And then I first have to close the other function still. If I would only do this, and let me just get this a description. By only writing this, I'm always going to get the year of the current date. And if this was too quick, let me just quickly remove this part. So by starting out with just the daytime local now, we are seeing the exact moment that I'm recording this. But if we change this, we can still get this one to date year, which extracts the year from the current daytime value, 2021. And then what's left for you to do is I'm going to use this and say if the date year equals and then I'm going to look here at the year column if that year column is equal to this then return the description default and if this is not the case I want it to return like the year value itself because people are, wanting, are going to want to see a reference in the report for the year so we're going to write else 
And then I could just write year, but because year is a number here, and we're gonna make a text value column here, what's good is to just write text.from and close the brackets. So this is our new column. And the moment we turn to 2021, you'll find that there it now says the value default. And we can change this one to type text. Great. Let's see what we can do with that because this was all a bit quick perhaps. So the only thing that we did was we created a new column and that new column is called year default because we're going to use it to always pass a default filter to the year. So we're gonna exchange this one here and find year as a text value. And if we would select uh, the year default here, think for a second about the implications. If we get to the first day of 2022, then the date time local now formula that we made is gonna see that the year goes to the next one. And when that happens, we can actually make sure that the default filter stays on here and we don't have to change anything for our report to move through. Now, what's great about this is that, for example, if we had a separate measure with the latest refresh time, let's take this one here. Uh, let's, or that's not what I meant. If we wanna have a measure that shows which of the years is selected, we could still have something like year selected equals selected value. And in our slicer, we have only this description default, but because we still have the other column untouched with only the years, we could just say, we can take the calendar year column here, the selected value, and we just write year semicolon and Great. So if we want to use that, we could, for example, take a multi row card and say that we want the year selected in here without any background. And let our card title be white. Then all of a sudden, we have a nice visual that shows us the year. Ooh, it's hiding. So that we have our year out here even though that our slicer is taking the default value. So this is, this is why we have a separate column for the year default. Now, of course, this is great when you have a report that shows January until December. Uh, but let's imagine if we go to another page that instead of having the months, we have the days in the rows and we have another value in our columns. So when we're looking at this, I could imagine that besides only the, the years, you also want to have a month in here because then you could specify really like which of the months we're looking at. So let's say this year default was selected already. In our report, we could keep this a default and we still need something for our months to be correct. Now it's a similar kind of trick. So you go back into Power Query, which was in the calendar. So we're looking now at the year default formula. Just copy that one and create a new column. And if you paste it in here, the only thing you'll have to change here is first of all, date month, because we're gonna see if it's in the current month and then the year. We're gonna exchange it by month as well. And if that is great, we are going to return the month name. And this will be the month name default. So if the, yeah, exactly. And this was already text, so we can remove it. So it's gonna do a check now, if the moment that we're refreshing a report, which month is that? And we're gonna replace all of the months that are equal to that month name, which of course is a single month. So I'm doing this now in uh, April. So the entire of April is changed by default. And I'm not doing any check on the year because otherwise it's gonna be confusing. And I could, for example, select uh, 2021 with the month May or April, sorry, April. But then if I switch to the current year or I switch to another year, then perhaps the, the value default would not be there 
because it would be tied to a single year. So my recommendation is keep this value not related to the year, but just to all of the months. Okay, we can go to type text. And now we can click close and apply. And while it's loading, you'll probably be able to see that if we put our months in this column here, then our report is mostly automated. So we can here select now month name default. And we put it on default as well, which is here. And of course, because this is text, it could be good to actually sort that column. So our new column here, you can sort it by the month number column. And then if we get back to our slicer, the great thing is that the default part, which is supposed to be the month April, is also in the position that April would normally have. And then we could, of course, just change the slicer names and this slicer name to Okay. Now the great stuff about this is that if from now on I would publish this to the Power BI service, anytime that my report refreshes and either the month changes or the year, then my report will also move towards that new year. And if this is not what you require, many times in accounting and finance, I require to show the, the months that have passed that were full months, then you could of course change that formula. Let me just show you still what the problem was that I meant earlier with tying the month to a certain year. Because this is a pitfall that's good to be aware of. Let's see. So in this calendar, if we return, and if I look at the month name default here, and I don't let it only look at the date month, but I'm also going to, going to say that, so I'm going to say and the date year of the date time local now has to be equal to year, then default, else month name. Now this is going to be interesting because now when I look into the values, you're gonna see that there is a month called April and there is a month called default. Let's load this into the data model. Type text, okay. So it's going to load a bit. I imagine that you'll probably be using a slicer pane to get things nice and neat and that there you can save a little bit of space and report real estate. So if your year is on default and my month is also on default, I have something here. Uh, but let's say I have January here. So this works. Okay. So if I, for example, I'm looking at my default month, then the only year I can look at, as you can see, is the default year. But let's say that I would wanna see the default month, which is April, but I easily wanna be able to look back at 2020 or 2019 by binding your month name to both the month and the year. The problem is that you can't. So for the user experience, this is not very fun because one would first have to take away this filter then probably find April, which is the same as default, is just in a different year. And then all of a sudden 2020 is visible. But if I go to, um, yeah, so the default one is gone here. But if I do wanna go back to the default version, I first have to undo it and then look for 2021 again. So these are some things that you need to look out for. But if you've configured it in the way that your business logic appreciates, then this is going to save you some valuable time. Just make sure that you have two separate columns next to the month and the year. And if this provided any value for you, I provide these videos for free, but it would be really helpful if you liked the video. And I hope to see you next time.